all right here we have the 2021 sunray classic 129 uh, this is a video walkthrough uh, we'll start up front uh, here you have your tongue jack uh, you crank it up and down uh, you have your chains to hook up to your vehicle uh, the coupler that locks on uh, you put a pin right through that hole uh, that just locks that on uh, your seven way right here uh, this is for your lights and your brakes uh, you have this cable right here it's called the breakaway cable uh, that's uh, this is your emergency brake um, you hook that next to your uh, chains um, with a carabiner or a quick link uh, don't hook it to your chains uh, that's just uh, for some reason if the trailer came off and the chains failed uh, it's just a little pin right here that'll pull out and it'll lock up the brakes on the trailer so it's not going way behind you uh, then you have a 20 pound propane tank uh, this is the pigtail uh, that connects to it uh, unscrew it uh, and then you can unscrew this wing nut right here from this bolt uh, and then the tank will slide out and you can go get it filled uh, screw that back on tighten that back up when you're traveling uh, then you just open the valve uh, just like your grass grill on uh, that uh, works your stove top your uh, your water heater or this doesn't matter. yeah your water heater uh, your furnace um, and that's it um, and then you have uh, your 12 volt battery up here in a nice box uh, then your spare tire is under this grate up top uh, up front right here uh, this is a nice little uh, platform uh, you can if you have firewood you can put it there or chairs or whatever else you have uh, you can put it up here and strap it down nice little cargo area uh, we'll move down the side uh, so up front you can see there's a little stabilizer jack here uh, there's one on each corner uh, so two in the front two in the back uh, those are only made for stabilizing so when you get to your campsite or your destination uh, if you have to put blocks on your tires to level it side to side uh, do that uh, and then unhook it from your vehicle and use a front tongue jack to level it front to back uh, once it's completely leveled um, because it has to be level for your fridge to work properly uh, then you can crank down your stabilizer jacks um, and you just crank them down till they hit the ground or if you have blocks um, underneath them till they hit that and then you give it half to three quarters of a turn just to put a little pressure on it um, they're not made to lift up the trailer uh, to change a tire or whatever uh, it will bend the jacks um, so they're only made for stabilizing uh, then up here uh, this cap just unscrews uh, all the way it'll unscrew uh, that is the drain for the sink up front inside um, so you can hook a hose up to it uh, once the cap's unscrewed you can hook a hose to that uh, and then into a bucket or if you have a blue tote um, that it can drain into uh, then you have your power cord right here uh, so this just pulls out and I believe this is about 30 feet long um, so it's a good size uh, this is a 30 amp uh, system uh, so when you go to a campsite ask for the 30 amp hookups um, you can when you're at home plug into an adapter then to a house outlet uh, it'll keep your fridge cold charge your batteries you can run your furnace uh, you can turn your lights on and stuff clean it before your trip or whatever or after uh, get your fridge cold I mentioned that but it'll you can run your fridge get it nice and cold a few days before your trip uh, the only thing you can't run is the air conditioner because uh, that requires that 30 amp uh, outlet uh, that service uh, so when you're at home plugged in you either have to get a 30 amp uh, outlet installed 
um, so you can run your air conditioner or just don't run it when you're plugged into uh, your house outlet and a lot of people get it confused with a washer and dryer hookup uh, this is 120 it is not 240 uh, so do not plug it into the washer or dryer hookup uh, then you have the exhaust for the furnace uh, just make sure nothing's in the way of that uh, while you're using it um, it'll disrupt the airflow and it will burn or whatever it'll catch it on fire uh, it gets that hot so just make sure nothing's in the way of that and definitely do not touch it while you're using it because uh, this metal piece uh, does get really hot uh, you have a nice exit window right here um, you also use it just as a regular window uh, then down here is the drain for the toilet uh, so this cap uh, just on the screws uh, they're new so it's a little hard to get off one-handed uh, but that cap just twists off uh, hook your hose up to it put it in the uh, campground sewer dump uh, and then this lever just pulls out uh, then it'll drain uh, once it's emptied uh, you can go inside and dump some water down the toilet to flush it out uh, and then close it up once it's completely drained uh, there is a holding tank for the toilet it's probably roughly around 30 gallons uh, so keep that closed while you're camping and then once it's about uh, three quarters or all the way full that's when you dump it uh, Then you have cable hook up here And then you have your fresh water connection right here, so you have a portable water tank uh, You just stick your hose in here at home uh, Before you trip uh, and then you can fill it up. You'll have onboard water uh, those are nice if you're going on a long trip you can stop at walmart or a rest area and stuff um, and then uh, if you go to a state park you'll need portable water because they don't have hookups there uh, and then you have the other water connection so this is the city water so that's if you're at a campground then you can hook your hose uh, from their faucet uh, to uh, your hookup right here um, and you will need a pressure regulator uh, before you hook it up to the campground. Doesn't matter what end of the hose it's on, just as long as it's before uh, you hook it to the camper. Because uh, sometimes the pressure from the campground could be too much. Um, some, most of the time it's not enough pressure because there's a lot of people there. Uh, so it just helps keep that pressure there or and regulate it. Uh, so your lines don't blow out or you have the proper pressure to take a shower or whatever uh, then you have your water heater right here so this little tab uh, flips up then twists and the cover comes down uh, this is the plug for it and that just screws on right there uh, that's the drain for the water heater uh, you have your pressure relief valve right here when you're draining it uh, so before you take that plug off for the winter uh, you pull this uh, lever up and re release the pressure once it's all gone then you can take that plug off um, and again when you're using the water heater uh, this right here will get hot because that's the exhaust for it uh, so just be careful of that don't try not to touch that all right, uh, moving to the back, uh, you have some storage right here, uh, decent size. Uh, so this is the crank for the stabilizer jacks. I'll show you right here. This end right here will just go on this drive nut, uh, and then you will crank it up and down. Uh, then you have an outside shower right here. Uh, it just has hot and cold water. Uh, you can rinse things off out here. or uh, It's nice, so you could probably set up like a little canopy thing and actually take a shower outside uh, if you're off-grid camping. Uh, then back here, uh, there's locks on each side. And then each handle locks. 